Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome to another conversation. This is Joy, Pink Girl Teaches. I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. And this is the first video that I'm recording for the new year. So happy new year. And it's my sincere hope that this would be your most significant year yet. May it supersede your greatest dreams. I just wanted to take a moment to have a conversation with you about what happens with narcissists sometimes. You know, there comes a point where you hear narcissists say things like, oh, you abandoned me and, you know, you are not committed to me. And they say these things to make you feel guilty about making a decision to choose yourself. Tune out the voice of the narcissist because they were never, ever choosing you. And the thing about it is, you cannot abandon who is not there. You cannot abandon. And people who love, don't abandon the ones that they love. There's that saying that goes around, or there's that saying, should I say, that says, people only abandon who they are using. But you never find in these instances where a narcissist is involved and you are not a narcissist that you abandon them you know you you can't because you love them and when we walk away and we choose to go no contact and we make the decision that against all odds no matter how badly we feel that we miss them we will not answer their phone calls anymore in fact you're blocked you're blocked all over social media you're blocked in the email you're blocked on the phone Oh, everywhere, everywhere you can possibly block a person because you see, you have to create an environment that is conducive for your healing. Therefore, it's not abandoning them. When you make the decision and you make the choice continuously to pursue, to chase down, to be with somebody who is not fully committed to you. And I'm talking about both feet firmly planted on the ground where there is no duplicity, where there is reciprocity in the relationship. You pour into them, they pour into you. They are demonstrating love. There's no way that you, you know, you should be going for something that less than that. <laughs> you can't, you see, because People don't just abandon who they love, but when you make the choice to go against the grain and choose somebody like a narcissist, essentially you're abandoning yourself. You're self-sabotaging. You're putting a stop to your dreams, your hopes, your, your purpose, everything that God knows that you are. You put a period to it and say, I'm going to focus on this person because essentially that's what it is. Everything is about the narcissist, their world, and they expect the whole world to revolve around them. So when you make the choice to fully engage and fully commit to yourself, they view that as abandonment because now that energy that you had for them, you're giving it to the one who needs it most. You're giving it to the one who deserves it most and they can't stand it. It's not that you abandon them, no. You reject them. You reject the lies, you reject the manipulation, you reject the control, you reject the intimidation. Anytime you have a situation where there is manipulation, control, and intimidation, that's witchcraft. And so you've made a choice to reject the witchcraft. You reject every lie, everything that they've ever told you, and you dive into your journey of healing. You dive into self-discovery. You dive into engaging fully in the process of being everything that God knows that you already are. And they hate you for it. There's a few different ways that narcissists will respond when they feel that they have been rejected by you. And I want you to consider this for a moment that your, your decision to fearlessly pursue your most significant state is a narcissistic injury. You see, it's a narcissistic injury because what you're saying to them essentially is that you get no more play in my mind. You get no more play in my life. I'm not going to commit to you anymore and I'm going to return this energy to me where it belongs. And that goes against everything, everything that they believe about themselves because they believe they're the best. 
And so if they are being rejected by you, somebody who they once had on a pedestal and actually idealized and thought that there was something special or unique about you that they had to have you in their life and now that person that they had on a pedestal that they played for a fool and they think now and at one point they thought they were better than suddenly flips the script yeah you're allowed to issue a plot twist in your life at any given point and so they experience a narcissistic injury because they didn't see it coming they never see it coming and I want you to understand that it's because so many people choose to stay in the harem so many people choose to stay in the narcissistic love cult they choose to serve the narcissist they choose to be um, obedient and submissive well not submissive but subjected to everything the narcissist desires and so here you are making a choice to come from behind here you are making a choice to choose yourself that you are no longer going to compromise your integrity that you are no more going to compromise your dignity you are no more going to compromise your destiny your purpose and you are going to be everything you were fashioned and formed to be and what does that say to them wow it's hard for them they can't fathom it but it's a narcissistic injury and for some it can last decades this is why you hear stories about narcissists still trying to hover somebody 40 years later 40 years later yeah it can last decades and so what they'll do is they'll devalue you then they'll do they'll engage the services of their flying monkeys those in the narcissistic harem and you have to understand it's like they will attack everything that is integral about you your character they abandoned me they didn't choose me after everything that i did for them after everything i did for him after everything i did for her they abandoned me no 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 the only thing they did was lie to you the only thing they did was steal kill and destroy that's it just like the the their father comes to steal kill and destroy anytime a narcissist is on the scene you got to believe that a crime is taking place the bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy the narcissist was never a teammate they were never a team member they were always always about themselves and so yeah they had their own agenda they were they are in fact predators so they come to steal kill and destroy never forget that that's why you got to let that that smear campaign roll off don't engage you can't engage with a pig you're going to end up in the mud just as dirty as them they have nothing to lose and somebody who has nothing to lose will go as far as they need to to make sure you lose everything that you have it's not even worth it what what you deciding your choice to choose you tells them that you consider them worthless and that is a blow to their ego it's, you know that nar narc injury you're telling them that they are worthless and I'm moving on with my life without you and I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm putting pressure I'm going to apply pressure on these goals. I'm going to apply, apply pressure in my pursuit of God. It's all gas and that's it, period. They cannot stand it. What gives you the right to decide to live your life how you want? It's a narc injury. They thought that they could control you forever. But uh, plot twist, no, they can't. And one thing that they think is how can you reject someone as superior as desirable as attractive as me don't you know that they consider themselves a unicorn and for you know for what it's worth let's let them call themselves unicorns because unicorns don't exist just like their real self it doesn't exist just an empty shell nothing there yet they want to project su superiority and worth and value dignity character nothing is there real quick story a narc discard and you know once once i was going through with a narc and i made the decision to walk away i heard from you know from the flying monkeys 
that oh he was all over social media talking about oh how could she not want a good man you know ladies the good man is over here and I laughed to myself and I said you can be a good man all you want and you can project the image of a good man but here's the thing good is at the bottom of the totem pole good is at the bottom of a, of the totem pole you know it goes good better best good is at the bottom sometimes they want you to settle for what don't ever settle for what they say don't ever settle for good because that is what has been offered to you there is so much more than good good is the baseline it is the starting point and you see how they try to project their 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 standards on you no you are a child of the most high god we do a kingdom over here baby we are not settling for good do you understand that god has something that is superior for you that is integral he has something that that demonstrates love the way that he does so we don't do good over here we're kingdom kids and I just left and let it go let them feel what they want to feel and you need to do the same because it doesn't benefit you anything losing sleep over them it's a process that we go through and I understand that and I've been there but just remind yourself that it's a process and we go through we do not stop we do not lay down on the hard floor of defeat and make love there we do not sit on the seat of disappointment we are kingdom you are seated in heavenly places in christ jesus no weapon formed against you shall prosper not even the ones that form in your own mind they cannot and they will not prosper in the name of jesus yeah they may sometimes seek revenge <laughs> because your disrespect and it's really your standard listen like i just said we're not settling for good that's basic you're you know they'll they want to seek revenge because they think that's a form of disrespect but since when has been choosing yourself been disrespectful only to somebody who's been playing you and only to somebody who never chose you in the first place because we wouldn't be blocking people who have been loyal and integral we wouldn't be walking away from situations where we were treated well we would stay we would want to stay right but not with a narcissist we move on and so that's why sometimes you find that they will respond by having a smear campaign and you can find that these smear campaigns can be so aggressive because it's that narc rage that you know they have to lash out and sometimes it's offensive sometimes it's brutal and aggressive and harsh and cruel and you wonder how could somebody that I used to lay down with how could somebody who's professed to love me say these things about me nah they were just words words mean nothing you see one thing about love and you must remember this going forward in all of your relationships love requires accountability where there is no love I mean where there is love with no accountability it's just another form of witchcraft it's not love you're accountable to the people that love you sometimes it's just saying you know what I'm, I'm being responsible with what you have given me the love that you are showing me the love that you are pouring into me and you must require some accountability for the love that you give that's why I don't just pour out your love and I'm talking about that intimate love to people who haven't proved their worth I don't believe in testing people but I believe in discerning the spirit and guarding what God has given you your love is priceless yeah so yeah expect the smear campaign that's what they know and another thing that you can anticipate and you will experience is hate they will hate you they'll hate you because they can't be with you they'll hate you because they can't they can't tear you down they'll hate you because you chose yourself you chose who they rejected don't you know that if they wanted to be with you they would not have gone to the other side but you made the choice you said I don't care I'm moving on and you're the one who stands out from everybody in the in the narc harem in their love cults they hate you you're disobedient you're disrespectful you're insubordinate what is wrong with you why can't you just listen that's how they think they don't want you to be on their uh, to be you know um, self-sufficient or just autonomous they don't want that they want they want servitude 
but we don't serve servitude in the kingdom nah <laughs> not to the kingdom of darkness we serve our father and that's it period we serve him and we 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 operate in service where he tells us and that's never to a narcissist and so sometimes you'll find that they'll ignore you they'll act like you don't exist they'll stop talking to you especially when you have kids and you're trying to co-parent and remember there's no co-parenting it's always counter parenting but the point of it is to make you feel rejected you know they'll ignore you and they know it's time to pay up for the kids it's time to make a contribution financially they'll ignore you because oh it's back to school and you need money they'll ignore you because that is the only way that they can feel like they want up to you Oh, you won't do what I want you to do, but I got you. And they'll do these things. They'll want you to feel stupid for making a choice to choose you. And just like I was giving you that example that uh, somebody thought I was going to be mad because uh, good, you know, that I rejected somebody good. No, I'm not, I'm not going to feel stupid about that because I understand good is baseline. You got to set things in perspective so that you don't start so that you don't start forming weapons in your own mind nah uh -uh, your kingdom you deserve everything that god has for you and this is not it and so they'll try to prove you wrong for making a decision to stand up for yourself but no keep coming from behind keep choosing you keep going forward and then you find that sometimes in some instances they'll threaten you they'll threaten you physically they'll threaten to you know not be there for their children they'll threaten you with court they'll threaten you with lawsuits just whatever they can think about remember they have nothing whatsoever to lose and they will go to all costs to see you fail they want to see you fail that's why you cannot life happens to all of us and sometimes we go through situations where you know we experience life and we may be um you know we may be down but don't ever think that just because you're down in whatever way physically emotionally financially whatever way you find yourself down and you feel like oh i'm, I'm rock bottom right now and then you're checking the narcissist social media and you're seeing everything is on the up and up. Yeah, of course. They want to project an image. None of it is real. None, none of it is real whatsoever. And that's not to say that they're always going to be, you know, at rock bottom or that, you know, the they, things are not going well to some degree for them every dog has its day please understand that but what they want you to understand what they want you to believe is that you walked away from something good is that they have something good ahead you are you 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 want to be no contact with me oh okay you want to you want to gray rock me okay you want to have boundaries okay well look at what i'm doing with a new supply look at what i'm doing with this new person that knows who doesn't know what i'm doing sometimes they do sometimes they don't but they it's all a mind game remember the enemy is a great deceiver and you got to be so careful because deception is real and it can cause you to think that there's something wrong with you when god says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and so fearless one it is time for you to actually walk in the consciousness that you're fearfully and wonderfully made that means telling yourself but not just telling yourself but believing yourself and sometimes it's going to take some practice but you got to keep telling yourself that i am made in the image and likeness of god i'm made in the image and likeness of God no that doesn't make you God but that makes you his child and he puts some things in you that are so valuable and you got to believe with everything that you have that what God says about you is true and nothing nothing nobody has the ability to rewrite who God says that you are all you have to do is believe it's true and walk it out. Thank you so much for sharing some of your time with me this day. Um, I hope that you continue to take care of yourselves. I'll see you live on Sunday. God bless you all.